Modeling business processes lets analysts and managers evaluate their operations and make good decisions. Simulations, which use random variables to test a process, let you test whether the system you design can meet your organization's objectives. In this course, I will show you how to build Monte Carlo simulations using Visual Basic for Applications and Microsoft Excel, the world's most popular spreadsheet program. I'm Kurt Fry. Join me at LinkedIn Learning for a detailed look at Thanks again for your interest in this course. Before we get going, I'd like to give you an idea of what you should know to get the most out of this course. First is that you should be very familiar with macro security settings in Office and especially Microsoft Excel. This course focuses on macros in Excel, so you need to have them enabled so you can run and edit them. Next, I when you create a simulation, you model the behavior of business objects, such as customers, as they move through an environment. That environment is made up of other business objects, such as customer service stations within a store or some other location. In this movie, I will show you how to create a class module. A class module is a structure within Excel VBA that you can use to hold class definitions. Those definitions could represent customers or service stations within your store. The sample file I'm using is chapter 0101, and that's an Excel workbook you can find in the chapter one folder of the exercise files collection. We're not going to work with anything in a worksheet, so I'll switch to the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt F11. Now that I'm here in the Visual Basic Editor, I can create a class module. To do that, I will go to the Insert menu, and then the last item that's available for me to click is Class Module, so I'll go ahead and click it. When I do, a class module appears. You can also see it over in the VBA Project Explorer. If you don't see the VBA Project Explorer, you can go to the View menu and click Project Explorer. We will also work with the Properties window below. If you don't see that, press F4 or come to the same menu and click Properties window. But in this case, everything is visible, so I'll just click away. The last thing I want to do in this movie is to change the name of this class module. I'll make sure the class module is selected and that it appears in the properties window below. Then I'll go down to the name category and in the text box to the right, it says class one. I will backspace over the existing name and I will call this class C customer. So C, C, U-S-T-O-M-E-R and enter. The reason that you use a capital C in front of this object's name is to indicate that it is a class. It's not strictly necessary. Nothing bad will happen if you don't do it, but it's a great way to remind yourself that when you see C customer, you're looking at a class that defines a customer. After you create a class in Excel VBA, you can define variables called properties that contain values describing the object. For example, you could create a class that represents workstations within a business. Each station would have values for properties including the station's identification number, average processing time, standard deviation of processing time, and the next station in the process, if any. In this movie, I will show you how to work within a code module to define variables and also start creating class properties for your objects. My sample file is chapter 0102, and you can find it in the chapter one folder of your exercise files collection. We won't be doing any work with the worksheet in this workbook, so I'll press Alt F11 to switch to the Visual Basic Editor. In this workbook, I have defined a class module for customers. And to indicate that it is a class module, I have named it C customer. The initial C indicates that it is a class module. Now in the code module, I can start defining the variables and properties that I need for the rest of my code. I'll start by declaring a series of variables. The first will be the customer ID. And I will make this a private variable, so it's not visible outside of the code module. So I'll do private instead of dim for dimension. P cust ID. So that's the customer ID. And I use the initial P to indicate that it is a private variable as long. All the variables that I use here will in fact be of type long. Next, I'll do the station number. So private P station as long. Next is the start time, and that's when a customer starts the overall process. So we'll have private P 
start time as long. And of course, if there is a start time, there's an end time. So I'll do private p end time as long. And now we need to keep track of when a customer entered a station and left a station. So we have private p entered as long, and then private p left as long. Technically speaking, several of these variables could have been integers based on the way we'll be working in the simulation. However, creating them as type long allows you to use much larger values if you want than could be contained within an integer. With those declarations in place, let's go ahead and define a couple of properties. So I will type a single quotation mark indicating a comment, and this will be the customer ID property. So CUST ID property. And I can start with the actual definition, and that will be public, because I want this property value to be able to be read. Property get CUST ID and we won't pass any variables into this particular method or property as long. What the get keyword does is allow you to assign a value to this property, in this case, customer ID. So I'll press tab and we'll have customer ID equals P customer ID. So we're looking at the P customer ID value or variable and assigning that value to customer ID property of a particular customer. We can do the same thing in the other direction. That is to take the value of an existing customer and write it out to the P customer ID variable. So that will be public property let then customer ID as abbreviated let parentheses value so what we're doing is passing the value of a customer out to the P customer ID variable. I'll press enter, press tab, and it's P customer ID equals value. So once again, with get, you reach outside of a particular class and pull a value in. With let, you take the value from inside the class and push it out to another variable. There are several other properties that we'll be using throughout this course but rather than make you sit through me creating them, I'll do it offline and I'll see you in the next movie. After you define a class and its properties, you can create an object that is a member of that class. In object-oriented programming, an example of a class is called an instance. For example, if you are simulating the movement of customers through a sandwich shop, you would create instances of the shop stations as well as instances for each customer that visits the shop. After you create the instance, you can assign values to properties. In this movie, I will show you how to create an instance of a class using VBA. My sample file is chapter 0103, and that's a macro-enabled workbook you can find in the chapter one folder of the exercise files collection. We'll be working exclusively in VBA, so I will go ahead and press Alt F11 to move to the Visual Basic Editor. I have left open the customer class module and you can see that I have the variables I defined here at the top. And also I have created get and let property statements for each of those variables. Get and let allow us as programmers to read and write values from each of those properties. With those definitions in place, we can now create a code module to create an instance of a particular class, in this case, customer. To do that, we'll insert a new code module. So go to the insert menu and click module and I'll drag that up to the top make it a little bit larger I'll name the subroutine sim test so I'll do sub sim test we won't be passing any variables in so I'll just type in open and close parentheses with nothing between and enter a number of times to give myself some blank space now I need to declare an object variable that will represent the customer I'm creating so that will be dim for dimension, objc. Now I need to declare it of type customer or C customer. So I'll type as, and then two Cs. And you'll notice that the Visual Basic Editor through autocomplete recognizes my definition of a class from earlier. So it's C customer, it's highlighted. I can just press tab and there it is. 
Now I can use the set keyword to create an instance of that object variable. To create an object variable, we start with the set keyword, objc, which is the name of our object variable, equals, and then the instance we create by typing new, and then the variable type is C customer. Now that we've created an instance of our C customer class, we can assign values to a couple of its properties. So I'll start by doing objc, which again is our object variable, period. And then we get a list of the properties that we identified as part of the class module. We'll start with customer ID. So I will highlight that by pressing the down arrow and press tab equals one. We'll just keep it simple, then enter. And let's also do the start time. So objc.startTime equals one as well. Now we need to verify that the assignment was correct. And we'll do that by looking at customer ID. I want to print the value to the immediate window, which will appear at the bottom of the screen. And the command for that is debug.print. If you do VBA programming, you'll get very used to using that. objc.customerID. So we're going to display the value from the customer ID property in the immediate window. Now the immediate window isn't displayed right now. So I will go to the view menu and click immediate window. I could have also pressed control G and the immediate window appears at the bottom of the visual basic editor. Now click back in my code, my subroutine, everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and press F5 to run it. And if we're lucky, we should see the number one appear in the immediate window. And we did. So what that tells me is that we have successfully created an instance of our class customer and assigned values to one of its properties, which we verified through debug.print. I assume that you have a basic proficiency in Excel VBA, so you already know how to code at least a little bit, which means that you will be able to follow along and understand the material much more effectively. Also understand that unlike in many other courses, movies within a chapter build progressively within that chapter. So at the end of chapters two through four, you will have a project that you will be able to run in its entirety. Also, understand that not every movie ends with code you can run. To keep these movies a reasonable length, I had to cut off at some points before the code was able to run. So we might create an outline of if-then statements, and then in the next movie, come back and fill in the code that will actually implement those decisions. Also, some workbooks contain previous code from the chapter. So if you open a workbook in the middle of the chapter, you'll see stuff from beforehand. You don't have to enter code all over again. And finally, as I mentioned, chapters two through four do include a workbook with completed code. So that is a project that you can run. And if you want to look ahead to see how everything